welcome to episode two of That Haunted Podcast. I'm your host, Shane. And your other host, Alex, and we are Saw Saw Paranormal. Paranormal. So on today's episode, we have a couple like starter off topics, and then we're going to get into a little bit of a... A little fun Q&A for you guys. You got a decent amount of questions, and we're going to... A couple of fun ones in there, we're going to answer mm-hmm. those for you so we form our parasocial relationships you feel a deep meaningful connection to us that doesn't seem real but yeah. it is and you know what they're gonna be questions about our paranormal stuff about my psychic stuff but also some of them are gonna pertain to that and um we're gonna try and answer some as many as we can on here really yeah. but our first like starting off topic yeah. we just want to talk about we're gonna get into the real spooky thing that happened to you today right oh okay yeah the real spooky thing Okay, something really spooky happened to me, not paranormal related today, y'all. This morning, very abnormal. This morning, I woke Shane, I got up early today because I was going to try and get work done and start to make coffee, fed Cooper, took him out. Noticed that I was a little bit short on coffee and I'm like, oh man, I got to like, literally by one scoop of coffee. I was like, I got to wake Shane up. So I wake Shane up and I'm like, hey, can you go to the store and get coffee or, you know, there's, we're also low on dog food. And so we ended up going together and taking Cooper in the car. And obviously we can't bring Cooper in the store. So me and Cooper stayed in the car while Shane went into the store. Now, <laughs> sad on the store that they don't have cameras out front, but... Uh, Not even two minutes goes by while Shane's in the store and an old man in a four-door black SUV or black truck, like, I I don't know what kind of truck really, but he, he pulled up about a spot away from me and I thought he was on the phone. This whole time, this man's trying to talk to me. He's like, hello, hello, lady, hello, hello, and he's waving at this point and I'm like... Now I know he's trying to get my attention a little bit, and I'm like, I don't know if he's trying to talk to me about a flat tire. He's not asking for money, because that's a nice truck right there. He's got money. This is an old man. He's got, lo- like, looked like longer white hair, a long yeah, white beard, beard yeah. and he had, like, a cap on. Not, like, a baseball cap, but, like a, like, a cap on. I don't know what kind of hat that is, but... Well, I start to get a little bit nervous now. Cooper's not noticing, because, like I said, he's... He's a parking spot away, you know, he could be talking to anybody, so my dog's not really noticing. My dog will freak out as soon as something's really wrong. Well, my dog starts to notice this man is now stepping out of his truck and coming around the side and approaching the vehicle, like our vehicle, and now Cooper's staring at him. I see the old man, I start to panic because I'm like, I don't have any of my knives on me. My window's open, so if I gotta defend myself, my dog's gonna jump out of the freaking car. And I don't want any, I don't want my dog to like be on the loose while I'm trying to f- fend for myself. Fend off a pedo. Right, while your right. Dog is running amok. Or he's gonna tr- attack the man. Who knows? I mean, either or. But I don't want the man doing anything to my dog, so th- my mind is in like scrambled egg mode. And um, I see the man look up. So he noticed Shane walking towards the car and that man scurried back around and got in his truck so quick and he starts looking around, gets back in his truck and then he stares at us. And Shane didn't even have his phone on him. He accidentally left it in the car. And this is all within five minutes, y'all. I don't put my phone in if I'm going to be like two minutes or whatever. And I usually don't. I don't no, like literally. It. He's like two to five minutes. This all happened within a five minute span. Like, he was not even a long time. And I was like, oh my god, you got to keep your phone on you from now on. And it wasn't your fault. It's, the, it's obviously, it's the world. Like, this is just how the world is. It, this is all within a five-minute span. Like, Shane wasn't gone a long time. He doesn't usually leave his phone. And if he does leave his phone, like you said, two to five minutes. We're in a small city. And also, I'm a little bit of a psychopath. I can usually defend myself, no problem. And I usually have knives on me, if not... And I could have, but the issue is I don't have my key. I don't have the keys to our car. I couldn't roll up the windows to make sure my dog wasn't going to escape. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I would have had no problem taking a pen to this man. 
There's... I can't find my pen in my car either. I lost oh, my really? I, I, so, I really would have so been <laughs> to start throwing quarters I, I, at him. I, 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 yeah, well, I, those are gone also from the vending machine. I definitely could have kicked him. Yeah. I basically gutted my car of all necessity, survival tools, like my knife, my pen, my chain. I am a weapon. Yeah. It's fine. So, it, yeah. But the dog wouldn't have been fine. So it, it was <laughs> just a ruck, really. But then as we were pulling out, Shane noticed. He's like peeking over his back seat to look out through his back window at us. I'm like, what the fuck is He was like doing? watching us leave. <clears throat> so now my mom's nervous. And now we were like, you know, hope she's like, you know, hopefully he didn't follow you guys there, which I don't think is the case. But you never really know. And it's kind of creepy because now we have to look out. This is a small city. A lot of people in it, but a small city. And I rec- I may not know cars very well, but I know faces. And I'll recognize his face. I'll freaking remember it. No problem. Um, I know what color eyes he has. I know what he was wearing. I know what he looked like. Show me. Show me old man. Yeah. In a nice truck. So clearly he wasn't going to ask for money or tell me we had a flat tire because we don't. Yeah. So, and then after that, you know, we got home. And we basically went out pedophile hunting. A little bit, not Monty. Kinda. It's funny to say it that way. But yeah, we. My mom was like, maybe you guys should go back, and I was like, I don't know if Shane really wants to. And he's like, Nah, I'm gonna put my shoes on. So we went back to the dollar store, and I told the man. I went in there and told him, just so you know, there was a guy in the back lot over here, parked near us. We park away because of the dog. Um, and he was trying to approach the vehicle. He never came into the store, sir. And he's like, oh, unfortunately, I don't have cameras outside. Again, which I don't understand why he would tell a random person that. Like, you could be lying. It makes no sense to me why he would say that. I don't, well, I clearly am not lying. And secondly, guys, what's really bad about this is if you know, if you guys watch our videos, you know what I look like with makeup on and with no makeup on. Yeah, like, and I'm not even five feet tall. Do I really look even fucking 18 to some of y'all? Without makeup on? You do to me, and that's probably the only thing that matters. But that's because you know, you know, you know how old I am. And, like, you yeah. see how I, like, you see me get ready every day. So, like, when I don't get ready, it does, it, you know, it's not. But, like, people at my work, when I, I, I've never worn makeup in front of them. None of them believe that I'm, I'm even over the age of 18. Mind you, I'm going to be 27. Yeah, you're kind of living with, like, an orphan situation in that movie. <laughs> yeah, I could pass as... Yeah, I could do that but, shit. Yeah. I should be an actress. Like, a creepy actor. I can't do anything serious, but if you put, like, fucked up makeup on me. Yeah. Special effects. Oh, we gotta do that. Anyways, but, um... Yeah, what's creepy about the situation is basically he was approaching somebody that doesn't really look that old. So clearly, and there is a sex trafficking issue. Yeah, there, for, I don't know why it's around here, but it's very wild how, like, you know, many reports are about it. There is a lot of lately. reports in our area weird. about it, and it, it's it's a weird time in our city. So we kind of have to be careful now because am I being tracked by these people? Or is, is somebody like, what, like am I going to be a target because I look small and young? So, yeah, um, this is, I guess, bringing this topic up is just a reminder to stay safe, you guys, and be, be aware of your surroundings and always have something to defend yourself. If you can't physically defend yourself, even if you can, have mace, have, have a legal pocket knife, have something, um, a taser, anything that you freaking are allowed to legally carry as a, def- a weapon of defense please do so and keep it in your cars keep them in your pockets and your purses and your wallets because while you trust your friends and the world don't trust the world isn't safe so we just have to stay cautious and be prepared so keep a brick in your back pocket next to your wallet and just you know (laughs) knock some teeth out yeah grandma would always say yep keep a bat keep a hammer in your car yeah Get, get, get real creative with it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Piano wire works really good if you fair play Call of Duty. There is no... Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be anything... I mean, it, it could be a bottle of wine that you smash your teeth in with. See it don't why matter. I want to get my pistol permit now? Yeah, I do. My cousin actually has one. Yeah I, yeah, I don't blame you. I really don't. And I told you once we get a house, that's more plausible, but... 
we'll get there. <clears throat> but second topic opening up. Run, sorry. Hmm? Yeah, sorry, my nose is running. You're okay. You're good. Uh, second topic. I don't know if you guys know. You mind if I leave with this part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but you know, you guys know Nick Groff from the hit TV show Ghost Adventures up until whatever season he left. But you know, he's got his YouTube channel. He's got his own TV Death. show. Death Walker. It's on uh, Roku, Tubi. Tubi, Discovery Plus in the YouTube. UK. He's got a YouTube, but it's called Craft Adventures. It's kind of different, which I don't understand why he does. Anyway, but yeah, so Nick Groff, he, he... We like him. He's, we like him. He's he, cool. I know I dissed him in a past video. The, the I think list. that was more jokes. Yeah. It was jokes. It was. It, it was more for shits and giggles. Um, Here's the thing, you guys. Sometimes the... The investigations that aren't like, oh my god, in your face, just means they're not over dramatized. And Nick doesn't over dramatize stuff. Kind of like a Jack Osborne situation. Like, yeah. The crazy shit will happen to him. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they but don't over dramatize it. He's like, probably used to it. Kind of like how I, I don't go over. Unless something that you're not used to really stirs you yeah, up. Yeah, unless like that one investigation that we're not going to talk about yet. Yeah. That shit happening. I was, that was, I probably never showed as much emotion and investigation. I know. During that. I think you're opening up more too with your abilities. Yeah. And I think going to haunted locations are, you know, doing it for you, but. But anyway, yeah, Nick Groff, yeah, Death Locker, he's got his YouTube, he was on Ghost Adventures, but we've come to realize that we think he lives like very, very close in our area. W-N-Y? Yeah, W-N-Y, very close. Yes. Because, you know, um, him filming Death Locker season... He films around here frequently. All the way around. Frequently. And he's very good friends with Dan Clays. And uh, we're starting to form a connection with Dan here and there on Facebook. Mr. Dan, again, hit us up on the pod. Yeah, Dan. Never going to stop saying that until he hit. I think it's class. I think I'm... If I'm mispronouncing your name, please correct me. I don't want to butcher Dan, you know we're talking to you. But... Um, we would love to visit the Hinsdale house too, but they film together frequently. Yeah, I think Dan produces it, or maybe films. One of those two. And you know what? Tessa's a really good freaking psychic medium too. Talk towards the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, we're talking too. Yeah. Tessa's a really good psychic medium too. Like, I applaud her. She does really well. She, her accuracy level too, coming from another psychic medium here, I can tell that she's the real deal. I don't know if I could ever afford a reading from her, though. I don't know. They're a, they're a hot couple, too. Okay. Oh, Kurt. I'm going to throw that out there. Yes. They're <laughs> Shane gets so awkward. He's like, oh. <laughs> yes. Attractive couple, and they do amazing together. People love them. People love a good, honest, paranormal couple. Um, and to know that they're in our area, I kind of hope we get right. in touch one day and can yeah. do something they're, cool with them they, one day. They would be like so close by. They did something with Exploring Josh. They did, yeah, but they're also just at and that was Eastern at, Hills Mall. And that was at Iron Island. They were at too, Iron though. Island. They with were at, Josh. They were at uh, uh, Van Horn. Mm-hmm. Some pub in Winery Buffalo. At the yeah. Merge room. And they filmed the last season all around here mm -hmm. from Death Walker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember when I first started my job, he posted that he was at Wurlitzer. Yes. And I'm like, I wish I could leave work right now. I know, I know. And that's, like, very cool. Like, that's wild for us, y'all. Yeah, even at Eastern Hills Mall, we were like, we got to get a dog sitter. And we, and we couldn't, really. Yeah. They weren't even at the mall by the time someone could come, sadly. Um, maybe they were, and they were just doing their own stuff by that. You know what I'm saying? And in the video that we watched, they, they, they filmed the meetup. There was only one family. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so there was only time, and, you know, because they can't overwhelm themselves either. That's a lot, yeah. especially for a psychic medium to take on. But I feel like a lot of people don't know that he's around here. No. Because we're, 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 we we're, we're, we're in a, I wouldn't say we're in a small area. But we kind of are, but then we're, we're not. We're in a smaller area with a high population. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, a lot of people know Ghost Adventures compared to just Nick The Roth. thing is, too, though, the paranormal community isn't that large. It's growing. It's definitely growing but only you know we might be a small area with a large population but then only a percent of that large population watches this stuff so then of course they don't know yeah. you know they don't they don't even know who he is or if he's famous if they don't watch it sadly mm -hmm. sad for them huh? i do think that i'm, I'm surprised we haven't run into him yet because again he was so close to us however long ago it was he was at world sir 
Hell yeah. But yeah, uh, I just think it was cool to mention on the pod. Yeah, I hope, I truly hope that we can uh, do something fun with him and Dan Clays one of these times. Which we're trying to get Dan in on a, a residential super, case. Super secret project. Yeah. Yep. Something we haven't been able to discuss yet, but when we do, y'all, and it's going to blow getting, your socks off. We're getting closer to that point because we have the thing coming up next week. Technically next week. Is, yeah. And then there's a couple smaller smaller, smaller things I want to throw in. And I think more B-roll. And more then, more B-roll and, of it, yeah. And the thing I was telling you about where, like, um, effects and... I think would be great for that, yeah. especially for reenactments and stuff. So yeah, we're very close to releasing that. <laughs> we're not clo- we're, we're closer to finishing the project in terms of releasing it. I'm taking. I'm gonna take my sweet, sweet, sweet baby time on it. And if you uh, that, those were my air punches, you guys. I get excited. Yeah, you guys hear her, her air punches? <laughs> yeah. But now we're very close to finishing it, which is exciting. This then, is like probably one of my favorite places to go now too. Absolutely, but yeah, we're closer to finishing it. Filming it, editing's going to take a long, 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 tedious time. Yes, that's why it's going to take a while for us to tell you guys. But it's it's starting to hit closer and closer. And, oh, I can't wait. You guys are going to be so excited. Should I say the game plan of, like, what we're going to be releasing? That kind of, not, like, what it is, but, like, the stuff we're going to, like, the teaser stuff for it. No, don't don't say it. Okay. We do. We are going to post a picture of that, though. So. Are you dead? Yeah. Oh, oh, Kurt. Oh, skirt. Okay, so. I got a fire. Don't tell anybody. No. No. Not here. I already did. No. Um, we're going to go into the Q&A. We're yeah, gonna we're going to cover gonna, that one. We're going to hit. We're going we're gonna to get into the fun stuff now. We Alex survived an abduction. Yeah. We know Nick Groff's address. No, we don't. We but. know that he's possibly in the area, and he films over here a lot, and that's cool as heck. They're they're very inspiring. They're an inspiring couple, and very successful in their passions. So, hope to bump into y'all. And Nick, if you're avoiding us because of that tier list video, I am sorry. I was making jokes. Clearly, I why are you pointing it out? Nobody would ever find it if we didn't. Find yeah, it's it one of our least viewed video. No, it's not one. They're like digging your grave. I know. I'm. None of this happened. Nick Groff's <laughs> not real. Oh my god, stop. It's the voices in my head. Listen. Right, let's start off with the Q&A. Yes, now we most, have a lot of them, too. Most of these came off of TikTok, right? Uh, yes. All right. Yes, they did. Well, you didn't write down the names of who said them. No, I did not. Well, someone on... Hmm? Let's start. You want to read the first question? Yeah, I can. I feel bad, because some of these are going to be directed a lot at first with our paranormal and you know Mm -hmm. um is it normal to get full body chills while thinking of loved ones who pass the answer to that y'all coming from a psychic medium is yes you like it's i call them chills of validation like if you're talking about a loved one or you're saying something or thinking of them and then you get chills that's some validating like yep you know what i'm saying and that's a very cool experience that some can have um can I read the next one? Yeah. Okay, the next question. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next question. Does your anxiety spike in a cemetery? I feel like anxiety, like if this was meaning for like an investigation, I feel like it would, anxiety would spike wherever you go, not just a cemetery. For me, it is very more heavy in a cemetery, I think, because there's definite bodies buried there. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. For a psychic medium, yes, my anxiety spikes in a cemetery because I'm dealing with a lot more people in one place. But for Shane, I think, think for him, all yeah. All. I don't know if that's because I'm a, the, the sensitive that you claim me to be, but I do get like bouts of anxiety in certain places. I don't know if that's just like, you know, I'm in a dark space and I'm scared or if it's a spirit. No, I'd say it's definitely the spirit. It's at Rolling Hills. That was probably one of the worst times I've had like panic attacks and anxiety. Yeah. But I would say to myself, you know, it's all around, you know, if I'm feeling something. And you more towards the cemetery because so I'm dead. We got, you got irritable too in the cemetery though. We both got irritable. Mm-hmm. Um, so <coughs> not Excuse necessarily me. anxious. I think people get irritable in cemeteries because you're dealing with so many different energies of different people that used to be here. They could have been angry. They could have been nice. They could have been negative they could like you never know who you're really coming across in a cemetery yeah 
Um, next question. How did you find out you were a medium? I'm glad you asked. So, no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> um, that's a tough one. I honestly, I think one, the more I looked into it, I realized I'd been one my whole life because I was seeing spirits since I was a kid. When we first moved into my parents' house is kind of when I noticed it because I, I was seeing figures, like shadow figures and things. Um, in my parents house before they we fully moved in I was like five years old and I remember my mom was like what do you think of the house I was like I don't like it <laughs> like because I was like little and I was seeing freaking shadow figures like what kid wants to move into a house like that and it was specifically in the basement and one in the house but then the whole medium thing it was weird because I started to hit age 14 and I started to believe in this stuff a bit more I started because I would see shadow figures my whole life growing up. I would hear things. Um, I was haunted in that household, really. Um, that's a whole nother podcast, I feel, though. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that another time. Um, but the, the big hitter, I think, for the medium stuff was when I was in high school. I knew I had abilities. I had been researching it, trying to develop it, and all of the sudden... I had this, like, I don't know, a girl walked past me, and I had this, like, really weird, like, wave come over me, and I kept seeing this old man in my head, and I ended up asking her if it was her grandpa that died two years ago of cancer, and she, like, started breaking down crying. She was like, oh my god, I don't know how you know that, because this girl didn't really talk to me. She was popular. I was not popular. <laughs> I, I was friends with everybody, but I wasn't popular. You know what I'm saying? Um, so she ended up sitting down and I gave her a whole reading. No, nope, never had I practiced, nothing. I had no clue how I did it and it got out. That rumor got out and it spread around my high school and that's how I started doing readings. And I was like, okay, that's why I always liked Teresa Caputo. I, I, cause I would watch her and I was like, I feel like I know how to do this for some reason. But yeah, next question. Sorry, I'm drinking my coffee. No, you're okay. Uh, what, okay, next question is, what made you a believer? I'll let you start. Me? Yeah, what made you a believer, Alex? My The experiences in my parents' house, but that's for another podcast. Yeah. That's why I feel like this is more for you. What made me a believer? I don't think I had an experience that made me, made me a believer necessarily. I think it was, you know, growing up, spending the weekends at my grandma's house, you know, spending the night. I would stay up late. And, you know, Ghost Adventures would come on. And I would just watch that. I would binge watch it every time it was on at my grandma's house. I just feel like that, like the, the show, you know, early Ghost Adventures, maybe. Yeah, maybe. gave you an interest in it. Yeah. And then, and then I guess, I guess well, I can also say what made, uh, made me start ghost hunting. Too. I mean, I guess, you know, me and my friends went to this one haunted area in Angola, New York called Pigman's Rogue. We have a video on our YouTube. But Go that wasn't the first time you guys had done that, right? Because they told me you guys would do it every once in a while. No, we went to Pigman's Road for fun. We had no equipment, just a camera and a flashlight. And then for my birthday, my old coworkers got me a bunch of ghost hunting equipment because of that. And then we went again with you the first time we met mm -hmm. with the equipment. Maybe not even then, because we just had the, uh, just the Bluetooth speaker at the time. And then after that, I got the equipment from my coworkers. For my yeah, birthday. yeah, yeah. You're right. So really, I mean, it's that. What's sad is Zach Bagans became something else. What's sad is like that show turned into something else because if you go and watch season one and two, it's not nearly as over dramatized, and you can tell they're scared and having actual experiences, yeah, and it turned into something else. But that is. Yeah, so yeah, not really an experience, you know, me watching Ghost Adventures, I'm like, this is real, this is unexplainable, you know, five-year-old Shane's like, this is insane. Right, like he's, like, little Shane is watching that, and you're like... Like, I, I know people get, you know, people like don't like Zach Bagans or Ghost Adventures now, but back then, you know, I had respect for the guy. Back then, if it, it sparked your interest, and that's what literally made you realize that there was more to life than yeah. just what meets the eye. But I think, like, a lot of people will say, Ghost Adventures is what got me into it. They were, you know, biggest thing on, what was it, Travel Channel? They were at the time. I feel like 
a bunch of investigators got, you know, their interest from just watching Ghost Adventures back in the day when it was awesome, you know? Yeah, because it was one of really the first big, I think one of the first paranormal shows that really started to air. And I think there was a couple others, but I, I specifically, the show that got me really interested was Paranormal Lockdown before me and Shane met. I had been doing paranormal research since about 14 years old. I don't know what sparked it, but it was Paranormal Lockdown uh, with Nick Groff, oddly enough, and Katrina Weidman. So they're, they're people I've looked up to since I was 14 in the field, really. Yeah. We do it, Cooper. Mm. Trying to get comfy. Mm-hmm. Want me to read the next question? Or was that... You can. Okay. Next question is, what's the scariest case you've had? Do we need to talk about... Are we able to talk about this one yet? If it's is the one I'm that? thinking of? Dunkirk? No. Okay, we'll do we that can, one. Okay. We can talk about the Dunkirk case. We're not going to mention names. Um, you just did that. Hmm? You said her name. Quietly. You can, ed- can, you can edit it. Okay. It's one thing. Yep. Um, so, the Dunkirk case is the serious case we've had to date. We actually full on saw possession. And while it wasn't in person, it was over video call. Okay, you can, some people know this, some some mediums believe in this, some don't. You can do remote cleansings. You can do remote energy healings. Is it better to be in person? Yes, but you can get the job done. Um, now, I I knew I was dealing with something demonic right from the get-go because this woman had never had a park she's never gotten in trouble not a parking ticket nothing nothing on her record and she her family members even told me they watched this happen she was pushed on the ground by somebody and suddenly levitated to her feet Her eyes were not her normal color eyes anymore. Her son watched this happen. He was like, that was not my mom. She didn't even look herself in her face, levitated to her feet, somehow got a hold of a knife, all within quick timing. The knives were all the way across the kitchen. There was no way that she could humanly have had the speed. And she stabbed this man. This is like a devil made me do it case. We've never really discussed very in-depth like this. So that, I mean, I feel like it's, this is, I'm scared that we might, we probably won't get to all the questions on here, truthfully. But, um, the devil, this is like a devil made me do it case. She stabbed this person, she went to jail, she, um, she had to get, her kids back home and everything once she got out because she did her time you know she didn't struggle she couldn't believe that she had done it she didn't she was like oh my god did I do that like when she came to terms with it she didn't obviously she wasn't gonna fuss um and nobody knows her to be a violent person by any means either um it, it was a mess and it just continued with people dropping dead around her um They would try to keep lights on in the hallway, and the lights would get ripped down by some unseen forces. She'd be trying to make eggs for her kids, and something would smack the eggs out of her hands. And she would try to send me as much evidence as she could, and half the time her screen would go black, her phones would break, she'd have to get a new phone. It it, it was insane. And I think what was harder is that with all this trouble she had, she was getting help with money. She... It's hard for her to get a job with everything. It's, and this is how the demonic really prey on people. They go after your money, your mental state, your everything, psychological, paranormal, however they can rattle you because they want to oppress you and get you to lose control if you won't give it up. Um, and it got to a point where they just wanted me to cleanse the house. They were like, you know when can you get here and at the time travel wasn't possible and I was like I I can try to do at the time I was trying to do an extraction on the house a cleansing and a removal of the spirits in the house because we were certain that at the time it we didn't think that same entity that was trying to possess her was still there 
um, there was no evidence of, there was possibilities, but there were so many different spiritual encounters they were having with different entities. My, my thing was, you know what, I've, I've got to try and see if I can close any portals in the house and just try to see if I can cleanse it. Um, and then if I really have to make my way out there and figure out transportation, um, and this case just got so much worse, you guys, um, mind you, this is the first serious case I had taken, so would I have done things differently and handled it better? Yes. Am I still in contact with her? Yes. And I do plan to help her if need be. She has told me that she doesn't believe these things are happening anymore. Um, oddly enough. And so... During the remote cleansing, I had I had Shane with me. He was chanting prayers, if need be, while I was doing the energy work to extract whatever was there. They started hearing crashes and bangs and knocks at the front door, and I was like, you know what? I just want you guys to form a circle. I want you because I needed them to act as a family. I needed them to form a circle in the middle of the room, hold hands, so they did that. The mother started to become very, very dizzy, and she needed to sit down, and suddenly what had happened after her sitting down, sorry, all the dog is like being a pain, sit down, Cooper. So, suddenly, mom didn't feel good, she's dizzy, she needs to sit down. I don't know how she was still holding her phone because what happened now, I didn't even know Shane had looked at the phone because it looked like he like was looking right down at the purse. He was just, he was like yelling these prayers. I'm trying to do the energy work to make sure she's okay. And I'm trying to continue the cleansing on the house. And she suddenly jerks back into the couch and her, her body starts convulsing. So hard almost, I want to say, it was close to levitation. I really thought there was a possibility that she was going to levitate off that couch. How hard her body was convulsing back and forth and flipping. You know what I yeah. remember? Mm -hmm. And then her head's going back and forth different ways. And her eyes are closed and her mouth is closed. And her, her head's going back and forth, right to left, back and forth really quick. And her body's convulsing, almost levitating off the couch. And it was, at this point, I... I'm like, oh my fucking God, she's possessed. So I look over, I'm like, Shane, are you seeing this? Is this like real? And he's like, I'm trying not to look. <laughs> Isn't that what you said? Or I don't remember, probably. What were you feeling at that time? I was too focused on reading the, uh, the, the, uh. What did you think when you saw that? I thought it was bizarre. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Like, can yeah. you even believe that we saw somebody actually get possessed still? No. It was fucking... It, yeah, I, I can swear on here. Yeah. I keep forgetting. I don't know why. I was like, well, no, I can't do that. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. No, but it was uh, It was definitely very strange, very weird. I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. I'm shocked that it did. I think you were uncomfortable at, in the moment because you were like, I'm trying not to look. Like, I think, I think it scared us both a little bit. Yeah. Even. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, which, that's our first time having an exorcism. Most of the exorcisms and extractions that we've done, it, they weren't in a possessed state at that time. Um, so we had a lot better, you know. Yeah. What's it was it? a learning experience. It was a that, trial so. and error, for sure. Um, and... And the family did know this. They were willing to just try anything that could help. Yeah. Um, so I want, I felt like 15 to 20 minutes. It was probably only 15 minutes that she was under possession. Um, I had Shane continue to chant and yell these prayers. And I start, I start saying her name. I'm like, hello, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say her name. But I start trying to, because, you know, when someone goes under possession, your main goal is to try and keep them that talk to the person not the entity you need to talk to the person to keep them grounded um so at that point i'm i'm trying to call out to her and keep her here and get her to come back to and she finally does 
and she was like oh my god I could hear you guys I was trying to respond and she's like it felt like I couldn't she's like I couldn't open my eyes or my mouth she's like I could hear you guys the whole time though um she's kind of like trapped in her body basically and couldn't she was being something controlled. was keeping her in mm-hmm. um and since then we kept in contact um moments after that my aunt's dog got really really sick and she almost couldn't come she found out the dog got cancer oddly enough everyone that was passing around her the this case the this family everyone was getting cancer and passing away um my aunt truly doesn't think that there's a connection here while i know how the demonic work i do believe so because i took this phone call this case originally at my aunt's house um and within five minutes of after getting off the call and telling the family that i'm going to have to shut it down and take a break and do more and look deeper into things to help them and i even tried to hand off the case and they th you know what that demonologist never went to her house the way they said they would I know there are some things this family was supposed to do to go through the psychologist and get a psych evaluation, but everything was checked out. I looked into everything for this case and handed it off in hopes that they, that demonologist was going to visit with a Catholic exorcist because Catholic blessings from this woman's church had made it worse. Yeah, she had already had the church at her house. So that this is the worst case we've ever had to this day people pass away around her um she keeps in contact with me and tells me that there is no crazy activity in the house anymore mind you their family dynamic has gotten a lot stronger and that could have absolutely rid some of the entities i do believe some of them are still there and i hope to help her maybe one day soon because travel is becoming a lot easier on us now mm-hmm but I'm sorry that specific question turned into a whole story, but I yeah. guess that's what some of them... I think we'll have to do multiple Q&A podcasts. I'm sure we will, yeah. Which, I don't know if we have time to do a couple more short ones. We can ones. do a couple more. Let's, let's skim through these. Uh, yeah. Can objects be cursed? Let's do that. I th yeah, they obviously can be cursed. I think, in my opinion, curse and haunted is two different things. In my opinion. Yes, they are. Because a haunted object can carry just residual energy, which is no spirit, just an echo in time. It can literally just tell you who used to be with them. Which we're still trying to figure out. Do, do we have residually haunted objects or were some of them actually used? Though, then some of them are actually haunted because something terrible happened. And we believe that some of our objects have had terrible things happen where it might be a more negative spirit yeah. holding on with them because they previously owned them. And then there are cursed objects that have been specifically put in tension by... Like a voodoo doll type situation. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Um, a witch doll or poppet magic, if you will. Um, or it could be like something like a Native American... Could have, like land, for example, you know? Yes, cursed land, cursed objects... Yes, it's, it's with, and the curse part of it is anything to do with intention that is set for multiple years, if not a lifetime. It's hard to break a curse. It can go on for generations, bloodlines. You can have a cursed bloodline. Um, this is meant to do harm and illness and possibly death. Curses are no joke. So that's that. Uh. <laughs> Have you ever had to deal with your, our answer to that one? Deal with possessions? Have we ever had to deal with possessions? Yes, we have. You guys just heard the most extreme case we've yeah. ever had. Have you ever went somewhere and had to leave from feeling heaviness? I would say heaviness. I just think the activity all around. Can't yes. get too into it, but yes. Yes, one there's time. a couple times. A couple times. Uh, the the conjuring we started to pack up only half hour early in the morning though but we just we talked also, to them and yeah, said and we were also dead tired being up yeah, all night yeah we didn't sleep we actually just investigated the whole time so we were like let's just start to pack up yeah um and we ended up staying there the whole time we just talked to them for the last half hour instead of investigate because obviously we were tired we wanted to get to the hotel yeah and kind, then yeah. 
the other case we can't quite talk about, but it was just so much that we did leave early. And I, I will say, half, yeah, I will not halfway. I will say, we left early. I got scared. Oh, you admitted it on the cast. Oh. Yeah, we admitted it on the pod. All right, that's that. Flip the, the page. This might be loud for the mic, so sorry. Mm-hmm. Have you... Sorry, I keep reading them. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Have you been attacked by an entity or unknown force? Again, I have. Yes, not going to get too much into it. Pigment is real. You can... Pigment is real. Oh. I don't ever talk that about was the first the attachment you've ever had. You guys want to hear a story? We should have. I want to have the boys on to talk about that investigation. I think you should too. Yeah. So I won't get too much into it, but Pigment. We were at Pigment's Road. Something happened. You know, we left. I didn't eat or sleep for maybe a week. Right, a week. Barely didn't even eat. Barely slept. Crazy. Yeah. So I don't want to get too into it. We'll have. We might try to get. The boys on. If you haven't seen the video, it's on our YouTube. It's uh, the investigation that started saw paranormal. Go check it out. It's uh, I wouldn't say it's a good video. It's one, one you know, first times I made a paranormal video. You know, like editing and all that. But crazy stuff happened. Go check it out. A lot of crazy evidence. Yeah, I Shane was it. definitely attacked. I've definitely been attacked. Yeah. Where are we? Let's do something more fun because I feel I mean, we were like they're not all gonna be paranormal and I'm like oh they really are all we'll do paranormal. This one. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Tell. Okay. Somebody wanted us to um tell something about ourselves other than the paranormal. Do you want to talk about? Do you want to tell people something about yourself other than paranormal? Real yeah. Quick? Now I'm sure you guys have seen me on on our YouTube. You know, I'm a big, buff, jack, tattooed, six foot eight man. Why are you laughing at that? Big buff. You're tall. You're definitely a tall. I'm a six. Human being. I'm a six foot eight man. I got 37 inch vertical leap. I'm six one. I have bad knees. Okay, whatever. Listen, something about me. I'm a big fucking nerd. Okay, I love. I'm a weird nerd though. You know, I'm a cool nerd. Weird. I feel like a lot of people are cool nerds nowadays. You know, like you know, I like I just started collecting. Card, like you know, Magic the Gathering cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and stuff like that. I think it's really cool. I play a lot of video games. I like D and D. You like antiques. I like antiques. I love antiques. I love old school stuff like that. That uh, that we call it, uh, nuclear era. You know. Why don't you tell them what kind of music you like too? Maybe. I love me- I love all music. I love metal. Metallica is my my all time favorite band. But I also like you know, you get to Metallica. I like the Bee Gees. Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Smack. Uh, mm-hmm. I like I like, like Synthwave too. But he loves Synthwave, you know. He looks wubby. Hmm. He loves he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Synthwave. I love. I think it's. I love the work. It's Very just chill. relaxing. Um, I I'm sure you guys have seen my nun painting by now, but I'm artsy fartsy. I do a lot of paintings outside. I like to sing a little bit. Um, sing to the microphone. No. Do a little Shakira. Happy to talk like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Spirits, can Shakira, you tell you're me? Here. Does this sound like Shakira? Hule, hule, hule. <laughs> that was gonna be so loud. <laughs> that was such a funny video, though. I cannot. I I don't know that comedian, but she's freaking funny. I can tell by that video. Um, no, actually, uh, something about me that is paranormal. The painting. I like to sing a little bit. Um, I'm obsessed with my dog. No. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm a psychic medium. No, that's paranoid. It doesn't yeah. count. You can't I'm say like, that. I don't know. Read the question again. You can't say that. I know. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I paint. I paint and I draw and I and I. You and are I like very. Music. You're very artistic. I am very artsy fartsy. Mm-hmm. I like a very wide range of music. There's not really any, like, rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of like almost all music. I just don't like Metallica that much. She doesn't like Metallica that much. I'm sorry. I really don't. Ooh. Oh, my tummy. Oh. Okay. Should I right now? Should we try to end it? I think I can Do you hold need it. to? I don't know. How many questions do we have left? Two? We can just say, do you believe in UFOs? Do you believe in UFOs? Yes, I believe in UFOs. Yes, I, I do. To an extent, I think people... I'm not going to get into it. It's a different pod. Oh, I'm gonna like. Go ahead. I'm gonna like S my P. Okay, we got Shoot. to go. So that's Sorry, all for guys. episode two of that haunted podcast. Um, 
Thank if you. you guys want any more questions for next time, definitely send us in some questions. But Yes, I'm sure we'll do Q&As every now and then, like certain milestone mm-hmm. episodes. But thank you for watching. Or Yeah, listening. listening. Thank you for listening to <laughs> episode two of the Haunted Podcast with Shane and Alex. We and hope. Cooper. And Cooper. He was being a little snooze ball over here. Uh, oh follow us on Spotify. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And you'll see us on Travel Channel Mid 2023. Hopefully, yeah. All right. All right we, I, I Bye, got, guys. Goodbye. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, I'm going to, like, actually. Turn it me. off. Turn it off. I'm going to make brown in my pee. No.